All right, video games, we really got to talk right now. DLC is getting out of hand. So DLC has been a hot button issue for years. It has its positives. However, more commonly than not, it has its negatives as well. And that's what we're here to talk about today. First of all, I would love to hear your thoughts on DLC. So please let me know in the comments below. Today, we will be talking about three major types of DLC that have really bothered me in the last decade or so. The first type of DLC that I want to talk about is what I'd like to call Adult Life DLC. So Adult Life DLC is DLC that is designed in order to cut down on grind time or to make a game easier. This type of DLC is perfect for adults without hours and hours to spend on grinding and just want to enjoy the story of a game. Some prime examples of this would be the Trail series as well as the Tales of series. I want to start this off by saying I am supportive of Adult Life DLC. Adult Life DLC, the first instance I can remember of was Tales of Vesperia. Um, Tales of Vesperia had level ups and gold that you could buy with real money. I believe it was $7 for 5 levels or $12 for 10 levels, and then you could spend $5 for, say, 100,000 gold. However, as it's gone on, it's kind of gotten a little bit more expensive. For a more recent example, Trails into Reverie, which you can check out my review, it should be popping on screen now, has two packs of Adult Life DLC, and they cost over $50 each. Now, this DLC does have quite a bit more, however, that is a large amount of money to spend on a single type of DLC. Like, it gives you a Sepith pack, it gives you a bunch of levels, it gives you a bunch of money, it gives you a bunch of view materials, which you can all get in the game, but it's to cut down on grind time. Now, the grind time is substantial that it's saving, but I don't know. I don't think it's worth $50. I think that's way overkill and should not be done. Um, it should be $20 to $25. Okay, I understand that. But $50 is overkill. It should not cost that much. The second type of DLC I want to talk about is story DLC. Story DLC is DLC that is story based, obviously, that can add both new areas or seeing the game from a different point of view. Some prime examples of this would be Final Fantasy XV or Ashura's Wrath. So Final Fantasy XV, so there are three different sections initially where you should have seen the point of view from another one of your party members where they get separated from the main party. However, these parts are very obviously cut out from the main game so that you will pay for the season pass to get these DLC stories. Now that's okay, but in this instance, it feels like you're missing a chunk of the story until you go back and play it later on. That leaves the story very disjointed. And to go further onto that, Final Fantasy XV had, I believe it was another three instances of DLC where they decided, you know what, never mind, we're not going to finish it, which leads it with an incomplete story, which leads me to Ashura's Wrath. Ashura's Wrath had the ending removed so they could sell it in four DLC episodes. Now the issue with that, okay, they're not very expensive, they're like $2.99 a piece. However, one, there was never a complete edition released for this game, so you are forced to buy that separately. Second of all, this is hypothetical, but if it goes, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, what happens when the PlayStation or Xbox Live goes down you have a game without an ending and it's very obvious that the ending is not in the main game so that causes a lot of problems you have an incomplete game what do you do with that you just kind of leave it and then be like okay i'm moving on i don't know what happened at the end but tough beans i don't think so the last type of dlc i want to talk about is unlockable content that used to be unlocked in game is now unlocked by paying for the specific type of dlc so some examples of this lately would be the Tales of series, as well as fighting games. So for example, Tales of series from Tales of the Abyss and Tales of Symphonia are an example. In those games, you could do side quests that would unlock costumes or skins for your characters, so you could fight in a different outfit. Now, once Tales of Asperia came along, at least on the PS3 version, you had to buy this DLC. 
you had to buy DLC instead of unlocking it in story. Now, Vesperia had a little bit of half and half, where you could unlock some costumes, but then you could also pay for some. Now, the paid costumes were more cameos, but my thoughts process on that is, okay, you have these cameo outfits. How cool would it be to be able to run into these characters from other Tales of Universes and having a side quest? And in the end, you get their clothes or whatever, which would be very, very nice. But unfortunately, no, capitalism took over and now you just have to pay for it. Another genre that is huge on this are fighting games. Fighting games as a whole have embraced the season pass model. You used to be able to unlock characters by doing things like playing through arcade mode without losing on the hardest difficulty or use X amount of supers in a certain match and you get a chance to fight this character and then unlock now it's oh look it's season one pay forty dollars and you get these four characters it doesn't stop there though you have games such as street fighter 5 that i believe they had six seasons six seasons of forty dollars now i get it it's a fighting game they used to do it like this by releasing a new cartridge like, for example, how many copies of different types of Street Fighter 2 is there? You have Street Fighter 2, you have Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, you have Super Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting Edition. There's a whole meme about that. But anyways, so you have all these season passes. You keep on paying $40 every year, year and a half to get another like four to eight characters. And that just continues and it continues. Some games are so bad that only half the roster is in the main game so you have to pay like another 60 to 80 dollars to get the rest of the characters in the game if not more that's absolutely ridiculous and i don't understand how people keep supporting it i'm guilty of that i enjoy my fighting games but that is one thing i don't like it makes me very iffy on getting into a new fighting game because i know oh yeah i got this game for 30 dollars, but i'm gonna spend 200 dollars on season passes over the years so that i can get the whole cast it pesters me especially when they lock a character away because you know they're highly anticipated so that people will pay extra for it. An example of that would be Street Fighter 6, which recently came out. They announced Kuma, a series favorite who has been in the game since Street Fighter 2, is DLC. You know they put him as DLC because they want people to buy him instead of putting him in the main cast despite the fact that he's been part of the series for over 30 years. 30 years? 20 years? Whatever. He's been a part of the series for a very long time. But anyways, yeah, I don't like the fact that things that we used to unlock by playing the game are now unlocked just by inputting our credit card number so that we can buy the DLC. So that is what bothers me about DLC lately. Different types that have annoyed me as of recent. I've been wanting to put this video together for a while. Anyways, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on DLC. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Is there any other types of DLC that you think should not exist? Please let me know. Anyways, that is the meat and potatoes, and I hope you have a wonderful day.